We see a relapse. We see a resistance. But now we see a resilience. Look at the prophet himself. The Bible describes Elijah, what a man, describes him as odd, hairy, eccentric, a unique fellow. He's a Tishbite. Of course he is going to be that way. Comes into the sophistication of this culture and this society and proclaims a man that didn't mind his own business coming in, looking straight in the king's eyeball and saying, God's bringing judgment down upon you yes. and upon this country because yeah. of Bless the Lord, we need more people like Elijah. We need courage. We have a need for courage. We need it. Why? We need it to confront our own comforts that we may have. In fact, that's exactly what he's doing in chapter 17 in verse 3. When he doesn't know how God is going to provide for him during this drought. And the Lord sends him to go sit around the brook a little while. The Bible said that he sent ravens, remember? Uh, to feed him bread and flesh. Uh, and the brook. Uh, and when it dried up, oh, what's going to happen? But God sent him to a uh, widow lady to tend to that. God is always tending. Uh, God is always saying, I'm just not sure if God can. I just don't know if God is able. I want you to know that my God is well able. Amen. Hallelujah. To take care of your need and provide what you need. That's right. But your faith for it all. This revival is going to cost. It's going to cost us to confront our own comforts. But know that God will take care of us. Because revival is not about our comfort. It's about trusting in the Lord. Yes, it simply right. reminds us uh, uh, that we need to trust in God. We need the courage to confront uh, 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 the compromising people of uh, this world. Just like he did with Obadiah having that double life. Uh, uh, always afraid of being caught. Uh, and, and doing what? Uh, uh, did he hide them? Uh, uh, because he was afraid uh, uh, that he would get busted. We don't uh, need to be afraid. Uh, uh, God is in control. Uh, of all things uh, uh, God is going to do uh, as God is going to do uh, and be on the same ground the Lord God and ever with thee uh, I shall strengthen thee uh, as I have given unto my servant Moses uh, uh, so shall I give it to thee and Lord be with you all me uh, even to the end of this world uh, I don't have to be afraid uh, I got a God that knows all things Amen. I can confront the corruption just like he did when I come to Ahab I can confront the casual just like he did in verse 21. And Elijah came unto the people and said, Hey, you got to decide. You got to decide. Because our life for Christ is not a private thing. It's a public thing. The world needs to see God's people taking a stand for God. Amen. separate thus saith the Lord and be not conformed to this world but be transformed how by the renewing of your mind so that you can prove the things that are good and acceptable and perfect and all that is part of the will of God Amen. Amen. think of churches trying to be like the world what in the world are we doing come on, come on. Come on. what in the world Bless the Lord. are we doing yeah. that's as far as I'll go with that because I think tomorrow I'm going to preach a little bit on that so I'll stop that our Christianity always runs cross culture. We have a stinging thought through our society right now that tells us that Jesus came to change the culture. Hogwash. He came to save people. Amen. That changed the culture. Amen. 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 That's Amen. right. Because he said, my kingdom is not of this world. No. Right. I'm not coming to change up this world. Okay? I'm not coming to do that. No, 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 no. I come to seek and save those which are lost. And when those people get saved, they start changing the culture. Yeah. Things start to happen. And you sit there and say, oh, well, oh, we just got to listen. We can't make whole people holy until they get right with Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. That's why we don't take the blood out of our city. They're trying. That's why we don't take solid preaching out of the pulpit. That's why we don't, we don't abide by this seeker-friendly movement because we want to take offense away from people that don't understand. They're never going to understand until they have a relationship Amen. with Jesus. Amen. That's, oh, where that's, it starts. that's where it starts. Amen. So what happens? It 
Look at verse 22. Then said Elijah to the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord. Balaam's prophets of 450 men. That's the only ones that were doing this. You got 400 more on the side, 850 said. So they pray. The Bible says for six hours. They pray. And they pray. And they pray. And guess what? Nothing happened. <laughs> and so they pray some more. And guess what? Nothing happened. So they pray a little bit more and they start dancing around while right? they pray. I ain't gonna dance. So guess what happened then? Nothing. And they're praying even more, and they're praying even more, and they're dancing, and now they're jumping up on the altar, yeah. breaking it down. Yeah. And guess what happens? <laughs> and so they start praying, and they're shouting, and they're praying, and they're uh, dancing around on the altars, and, uh, and they get lances, and guess what? They start slitting themselves. They start cutting themselves. So much the Bible describes that their blood gushes out. Yes. Guess what happens? No. Yeah. The only thing that happened was a lot Sitting over there going, well, bless you all. <laughs> Lord, who loved you. He's a Tishbot man. He had some sarcasm. He raped a facetiousness. He said, well, well. Why don't y'all scream a little louder? I bet you your God's asleep and he needs you to wake him up. You don't want to do that. He don't have a cell phone like you guys got, so he don't have an alarm clock. Now, you know, they didn't have a cracker barrel and they didn't have cell phones back then. Everybody's with me, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, look, I know preachers talking about cracker barrel being in the Bible. Let's know here in the Bible. I know it ain't in the Bible. Get over yourself. <laughs> no. So, hey, I bet you he got hungry with the taco bell. He's probably not even hungry. You'll have to be really, really hungry to go taco bell. I mean, like. Family three years ago to Taco Bell. Can I do an amen? amen. <laughs> yeah, because you ain't going to do that in your own comments. No way, who is that? Hey, hey, maybe, maybe he's gone off on a vacation. Maybe he's gone, he's gone way over yonder. He, he just can't hear because he's too far away. He is mocking them, buddy. Yeah, and so they just keep on and they keep on. And finally, Elijah stood up, I love it, and he said, That's it. We're done. You're done? It's it. We need somebody in this building. Yes, sir. My turn. Let's say it's it. Yeah. We're done. That's it. Hey, no more of this. Hey, you're cursing God? That's it. Yeah. We're done. Yeah. We need some daddies to stand up and say, hey, I, I love your family, but that's it. We're not allowing this anymore in the whole life. Yeah. We're not going to do part of this. We need moms that are taking a stand and say, hey, I've kind of allowed you to be dressed like this and do this kind of stuff and listen to this kind of music just because I thought, no, no, we're done. We're done. It's done. It's done. It's false, and we don't need to dabble in it. Come we on, preacher. We mess in it, and it's time for me to step up and mm -hmm. see what God says. Yeah. We need yeah. some people in this room tonight to say, all right, I need to go to work tomorrow and say, that's it. We're done. We're done with all this. Amen. We're done right, with your poking like your poking. We're done with the conversation like you're having, and it's time for you to see what God is really going to do. If some of us would just quit flapping this jaw right here and say that and let the Lord do what he wants to do, there'd be a lot of good that happened. Yeah. Right. I wonder who gets saved if you'd be quiet for a little while. Amen. Amen. Hear me now. Do you know who's chased more people away from the church? church. God's people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. we got to be careful. Look at verse, I don't remember it's in the notes. Verse uh, 30. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. 30. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near to me. And all the people came near. And he repaired the altar of the Lord, which was broken down. He had to. Yes. So we see right here in Elijah, there was a man that showed us courage. But now he's going to show us communion. And so he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar, as great as it would contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order, and cut the bullocks into pieces, and laid them on the wood, and said, Fill four barrels with water, and pour into the burnt sacrifice and the wood. And he said, Do it a second time. And they did it a second time. And he said, You know what? Do it again the third time. They did it a third time. 
In fact, they did it so much that verse 35, that the water ran around about the altar that filled the trench also with the water. Do you see that there? So he rebuilt the altar just as God commanded. He wanted to make sure that everybody knew what the altar represented. He knew it on purpose. Then uh, he took his foot and he made a, a trench. Uh, 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 the Bible says about two seed lengths uh, uh, deep. That would be uh, uh, approximately four inches. Uh, he could just have done it with his heel and, and went right around there and he said, all right, I want you to give me some barrels. And so uh, they went and got some barrels uh, and he said, I want you to fill them up. Four barrels, in fact. Go fill them up. So they did. Uh, he said, I want you to do it again. And they did it again. He said, I want you to do it again. And they did it again. In fact, the Bible said it not only drenched a, a burnt sacrifice, and not only drenched the wood and the altar, it ran over and filled the little canal that he had made. Boy, we need courage. But more than we need courage, my friend, we need communion with God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yes. You say, Brother Joe, what do you mean by communion? Look at yes. verse 36. And it came to pass at the time of the offering was of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Who's he talking to? Lord. He's talking to the Lord. Yes, he is. Before we have courage, my friend, we need to have communion. Yeah. Communion with God. Man, conversation with God. Uh, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God of Israel and that I am thy servant and that I have done these things uh, at thy word. Hear me, O Lord. Hear me. And this people may know that thou art the Lord God uh, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. We need people that will take courage. Uh, but we need people that are commune with God. Uh, Fixing the altar and cutting the pieces. This took time. While he was doing that, all the eyes staring at yes, him. Yes, sir. The whispers. <laughs> Maybe even some mocking from the others that were calling him. The stares. He could feel. The eyes on him. He could feel. But it was not all about his popularity. It was not all about his polls. It was not all about what Elijah could do. It was all about pleasing God. But he better just make it just about do anything. It doesn't matter what everybody else is saying. It doesn't matter what everybody else is doing. All that you need to know is God told me to do this, and that's good enough. God told me to do this, and that's good enough. God told me to say this, and that's good enough. God told me to go there, and that's good enough. God told me I need to have this, and that's good enough. God told me And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah, the prophet, came here and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel. Faith in God. That's right. Faith in God. Can I ask you a simple question tonight? Where's your faith? Let, let me ask it like this. Who's your faith in? Yes, Jesus. I know we're a bunch of church folk. We would sit there all pious and have our hands clasped and say, well, in the Lord, of course, preacher. Well, But is that true? Because faith enjoys the impossible. That's right. Can I tell you something tonight? I want you to listen to me. That's exactly right. I think the most thing that God is concerned about in our lives is our faith. And what we're putting our faith in. Let me illustrate like this if 